Love the fresh smell of brushes in the morning. Have you ever downloaded the brushes from Clip Studio Paint and they're kind of working, but they're kind of also overthrowing the government of Cuba? Well, this is the video for you. We're gonna go into Clip Studio Paint brushes settings and all that jazz. There's also an article that I wrote if you don't wanna watch the video. So let's just get started. Kind of smells like baka. <laughs> that was the worst joke ever. And as you can see, I already have some artwork opened in here and I was just messing around with brushes here and there. And the first thing I usually go is into window. And in here, we're going to find sub tool. So this is the sub tool, which is this little guy that I already have open. But if you don't have it, it's going to be in window sub tool. This is where all of our pans are going to be, like all of our brushes are going to be in here. And if you want to open this, you can go into B for brush and it's going to find all the folders in here. Or you can click P for pen. And another thing that we really need is tool property. So tool property is another little window that we're going to use. And we can go into here, window, tool property, that pen. And the first thing that I want to say is not obviously all brushes are perfect. <laughs> and some brushes, I just don't like using them, honestly, in you know, a sumi, but I just don't like using, for example, flat uh, marker. It's just not strong enough for me. I like, I like to really press hard and it barely gives me enough paint on the canvas. So that's why I don't like using it. And I try to tweak it later when I have time. But let's say I don't want to have it in my folder over here in the subtool panel. And an easy way to fix this is just collect all the brushes you don't like just in the back folder that you can actually go back to if you ever need that brush again. And it's very, very easy. You just find something you don't really want to use. For example, the flat marker again, and then you just click it and then drag it and then you can drag it all the way here. And then it automatically creates a new folder and I can just right click on it. So let's say the abyss. And this is where all of our brushes that we don't like are going to be residing. And the most important part of brushes is going to be in tool property. And as you can see, if you click different brushes, you're going to get different uh, functions and results for it. So for example, the dot pen literally has nothing. It's just an empty you know, void and it has no functions at all because it's such a simple brush. And as you can see, pretty much every single brush has a brush size right here. And this is really important because you can connect the pressure of your pen. If you have a tablet, drawing tablet, you're going to have a pressure and that can be connected to the brush size. So let's go into Milli Pen, which is a very simple brush. You can go into brush and in tool properties, you're going to find this little button and in here, you're going to actually find all these different functions. And I know it looks a little bit scary, but you don't really need to know all of these. Very simply, pen pressure, if you turn it on or turn it off, you're going to get pen pressure depending on how hard you press with that brush. You don't really see a big difference for this milli pen because the minimum value is set to 80. So let's set everything to zero and then this pressure settings curve, we don't want to do anything with it. So let's remove the point. And now we can remove the velocity. We will talk about this later. Pen pressure, minimal value. So this is very default. This is very normal. This is what you get. You're going to get an update of the brush right in the preview right here. But if you just start painting, you're going to see a difference. As you can see, it has like a little tape to it. And if you zoom in, you can see that it became a little bit larger right here and a little bit thinner right here. And that's how, you know, pressure sensitivity works. And if you don't like that it tapers this much, you can go in here and say, I don't want it to taper until maybe 50. So now we're going to be able to get pressure sensitivity if we press harder. So for example, this size is different from this size, but it's not really going to be that significant. Another thing that you can mess around with is pen pressure curve. And this is really not that complicated. Honestly, you can just mess around with this. There's usually three ways you can use this. You make a point and you press it all the way up. And this way, if you draw, you can get a very, very thick 
size to it very really easily. If you go all the way down, now it's going to be way, way less sensitive. And so that way we really have to really press it down to make it any bigger. And if you wanted to increase the sensitivity all over the place, you know, you want it, the brush to be super, super hypersensitive, just do an S curve. And this is an S curve that you can do in photography. Usually you just increase the contrast of overall image. And now, as you can see, it's easy to get very thin lines and very, very thick lines. The next thing that I want you to really look at is velocity. You know, it's a very fancy word, but it's basically meaning speed. If I go very, very slowly, it's not going to do anything. But if you have a very, very fast stroke, just like this, it's going to get thinner at the very, very high speed of your brush. And I really love that function. And if you go into pens, you can see there is a default felt pen. It's probably going to be in a different folder compared to yours, but it comes with Clip Studio Paint. And the cool part is if you draw with it, you can get normal, normal, normal. But if you go very, very fast, it's going to have a little more variation, which makes for a way more dynamic sketch. All of these that I've made for this canvas, I was just using this felt tip pen. And the next thing that I wanna talk about is color mixing. So if you click B for brush, you're going to find a thick paint folder. And that is my favorite folder. And not for the reasons you thought. Uh, I love this folder because it has amazing selection of brushes and they're all very nicely mixing when you add color to it. And as you can see, we're going to get a very, very transparent kind of feel to it as we go you know, lighter and we pick something very blue. And as we go, we're going to see that it's going to start mixing color with the red that we have already in on canvas. And you can see it created a purple, I know, color theory. Never heard of her. <laughs> but basically, it's a really, really cool way to mix color and create color palettes. And some brushes mix very differently. And if you click on thin gouge brush, you can just create something. And we create another one. This is really not going to mix that much compared to this part. Even though it mixes a little bit, you can see the difference. It just has a very different feel to it because of the settings. We're going to get into the settings in just a bit. But if you really want to mix stuff together, thick oil paint is your friend. That is probably one of my favorite default Clip Studio Paint brushes for mixing. And if you click, for example, purple, it's going to start mixing it so nicely. Look at this. Look at this transition. It's so apparent. It's so easy to make. And honestly, this is probably one of the you know, most fun ways to create a painting. All right, enough of the cool brushes. <laughs> I bet there is a lot more to this, right? And you are going to be correct. If you go into any brush that you have selected and in tool property, you're going to find a little gear icon. And that is where all the fancy stuff is happening and where you're going to actually customize your brush in terms of like more velocity, more uh, texturing and all that stuff is going to be right here. So all of this is hidden because you don't really need to use this every time. And that is the first thing that I want to let you know is that if you need a specific function, so for example, in subtle detail, you can see brush size and brush size is pretty important. You want to look at it every time. You can see that there's a little icon of an eye and that is because it's showing up in here. If you click on it, it's going to disappear from tool property. You want to have tool property usually open, but most of the time, you know, you don't really need this function, at least one pixel or this function specified by size on screen. So that's why there is no eye for it. The second thing is you can see in ink section, there's opacity, which is also very important. That's why there's an eye for it. And just like with brush size, you can go in here and just click the little box and there's pen pressure, velocity, random and tilt and all these different things. And usually a very standard brush that you can create in other software and, you know, something for painting, you just create an opacity connected to pen pressure, you get a brush just like this, that you can start mixing colors and you can start, 
you know, messing with things. <laughs> Back in my day, we used to just paint with opacity and that's it. And there was no fancy color mixing. Honestly, color mixing is really great in Clip Studio Paint. So anyway, I digress and you can see in blending mode, very usually uh, it's set to normal. And there's all these different ways you can create a brush. And this is basically going to start mixing the color depending on the blending amount. Very, very standard way of creating a marker brush. You have markers and what happens when you draw with a marker? Well, you draw once and if you draw a second time with a marker, it becomes darker. And that is what it's trying to emulate. If you have multiply, then it's going to start multiplying that color on top and making it way, way darker. And that's what it feels to draw with a marker when you're a kid. Those cheap dollar store markers that your mom bought because she didn't want you to you know, paint the walls. But you have all these different blending modes. And the next one that I want you to think about, if you want to create a brush, you can go in here and create a race. Let's say you have a mechanical pencil or a textured pen, anything that has like a very heavy texture, let's say charcoal, right? So you have this charcoal. And if you go into ink and you go into here and you do erase, and now it will work as an eraser for your canvas. I mean, this is like super, super cool. And if you want to create that brush as an eraser, you just create a new one. So I will make this charcoal. I can click this button. And this way it's going to save all of the functions that I've messed around with over here. So let's say charcoal erase. And in here, I can go tool icon, go all the way down, just click erase, click OK. And now I have charcoal erase that I can use just for erasing. Another very cute little trick that I usually teach people is that if you have a brush, you can go into color. And in color, you can see that there's foreground color, background color, and the very bottom, it's transparency. And if you click transparency, now you're going to use your brush as an eraser temporarily. And once you click on the color again, you can go back to coloring. And the shortcut for this is C. X for switching between these two colors. You can click C to switch to transparency and click X again. And now you have the color again. You know, this is like wild stuff that <laughs> back in my day, you're not that old yet. All right. Oh, before I forget, if you mess around with all this stuff and you feel like you broke the brush and you don't feel like you have, you know, ways to return to, you know, normals, you can go into here at the bottom, you can see reset all settings to default. You can click here and then boom, it's set completely to normal how it was before. And if you have messed with it and you want to keep it forever, let's say I want to set opacity to 50, then you're going to just click the other button that says save all settings as default. You click here, you say, okay, now this opacity is always going to be at 50 when you reset it. So let's do 20, 32, click okay. You see, it goes back to 50. All right, enough with the fancy stuff. Let's go into more <laughs> fancy stuff. So color mixing. And as you can see, if you hover over any particular setting, you're going to see at the very bottom, it's going to change the text because it's going to try to explain oh, that function does this or that. So I don't really need to explain uh, everything. If you're really looking for something specific, then just like hover over it and read what it says at the bottom. Anyway, we have color mixing, very important. You can go in here and there are three different modes. There's blend, there's a running color, and there's smear. And each one is going to give you different results. There are going to be amount of paint, density of paint, and color stretch. And at the bottom, you can even see that it's showing you how it actually works and how it's going to change the way it interacts with color. Pick something else and go back and then see how it interacts. If you don't like it, mess around with the settings. Then go into the second mode, see how that one works. And we can go in here and you know, start mixing again. You go into the third one, 
then you start mixing, then you paint, and each one is going to give you a little bit different results. And as you can see, each one mixed a little bit differently. The second version was this and it didn't mix or create color as much. The third one created just a little bit more color compared to the first one. But it's honestly all good color mixing at the end of the day because it depends on the settings that you're going to use. And honestly, the default functions for just the first color mixing, just messing with this is usually enough for me personally. I don't really use more than that. But let's just go into the next panel. You can see color jitter. It's kind of fun to play with color jitter, but it's not a very um, popular function that people use. And randomize per stroke and change brush tip color. Very easily, if you want to play with something and you want to find out what it does, just crank it up all the way and see what it does. And as you can see, it's changing each little thing that we're drawing into a different color. And it's going to change the hue by a little bit. So if you do 60, it's going to have 60 difference in terms of hue. So 60 is probably around right here. This is the size of 60 hue. It's going to vary from here to here. Saturation, same thing. Luminosity is how dark it is going to be. And the same thing can go for randomized per stroke. And you can see that it's not going to change much because it's going to be per stroke. And if you go all the way here into 180, you can see that each stroke I'm making, I'm going to get a different color. Sometimes I use this for shading, maybe set it to 20, 20, and maybe one. And if we create a shape, let's say we create this shape, and I really like it, but I want to add more variety to it. And I have variety, I'm going to add it through the color jitter. You can see that we can go back and I can just cross hatch each side into a different color. And that way we can add a little bit more direction to our little circle without changing way too much. This is cool, especially if you do it on a very small scale. It adds that little texture and feel of traditional paint. If you do this with, let's say, pencil brush or something else, it's going to give you like more personality. Even though it's very, very time consuming, I think it's kind of worth it if you really like that style. And in here, you can see that I can even probably play around with this even more play around with the luminosity, you know, make some strokes a little bit bigger, and then you're going to get a little bit more variety, but overall, it's still within the same range of color. And the main one is a brush tip. If you go into material, you're going to click plus, and these are all the different shapes that are available for Clip Studio Paint. And just in general, these are all the shapes that are inside of your uh, computer. So it's gonna be a little bit weird finding all these images that you can't really use for brushes, but there are some that are specifically for brushes. So you can see that this one is a very cool looking shape. And this way we can add more texture to our brush and we can make our own shapes as well. I will teach you very, very quickly how to do that. If we go to selection and go into rectangle, we can create a shape. Let's fill it with black. And now if you go into edit and register material image, you're going to see that it registered the box. And this way we have made a material. Let's say it's a box brush. And the main thing that you want to click on is use for brush tip shape. If you don't click on this, it's not going to work. Now, if you go into all materials downloads, I will just put it that in that folder because it doesn't really matter. So I click OK. So we have our brush that we have used before and we can go into brush tip material. Click here the plus and let's just go brush. And already we see our box that we made and we can click on it. 
Now we have our brush. Yay! This is the brush that we have already and we have saved it. This is just a box brush. It's very, very cool. I mean, it's very simple. It's not really nothing fancy, but I do prefer uh, either triangle or a box for my brushes because it's just nicer. But now here's the kicker. Now we can play around with how our brush is going to behave. And this way we can go into here and do thickness. And thickness is going to just make our brush shape in a different manner. So you can see this is our brush shape. If we go into again 100, this is our normal brush. And vertically, if you click vertical, we're going to change the thickness of it. And we just go into maybe 39. And now our brush is a little bit different. As you can see, it has a different uh, shape to it. Now we have an angle. An angle can be set permanently. And you can see the angle is showing up before, like at the bottom. And if you do just a little bit like this, now this is a really nice brush that has a variety to it when we start sketching with it. And the cool part is, is that if you go into angle and we click over here, you're going to find all these different options that are going to help you add variety to your brush. And let's say I want direction of pen. And this way I'm going to have more control because I have a normal Wacom, I can move my pen around just like this and create all these different shapes that I could have not created before because as I draw, my hand tilts, my hand is moving and I can, you know, create a box like this, then I go around, I can create a box like this and I keep going and can do an angle at 45. So it really becomes like a real pen. And also there is direction of line, which is another way you can create this. So it has nothing to do with the pen itself, but where you're going to move. So if I go this way, you can see that it tries to follow it. And this really works well if you have a, a triangle brush or a, an oval brush. And I really love using oval brushes for a lot of my paintings. And the next step is going to be spraying effect. It's very, very simple. It starts adding particles kind of like moving around in your brush and you can very, very easily add very dirty, quick texture to your brush. As you can see, it has like this feel to it. You can play around with particle size if you don't want to make anything way too strong. So like this, and you can go into here even more and you can see that there is spray deviation and particle density. I know this is all like, you know, complicated and you can click here. You can also control it with pen pressure and velocity. I, you know, <laughs> this is like really cool, but sometimes you just like use the regular old circle brush, but you can have all these things. Uh, the only thing I'll say that spray deviation is this one, spray deviation at the very max. It's going to try to keep all the particles inside. So I can do like this. You can see that it's kind of like very on the in there. And if you go spray deviation, the very, very first button, now it's going to try to have more particles on the outside of the brush. So it just has like a very different feel to it. So again, if you want to add a very quick texture to your brush and you don't want to mess around with different settings, this is the easiest way to do this. Now, the stroke is very important when you create your brush because this is going to affect the performance of your brush. This is one of the main things I will uh, tell you that you should actually look into if you have a laggy brush. Uh, the gap is going to be what, how much is going to be in your brush. So you can see that our brush is a circle and what Clip Studio Paint does is that it has a circle, 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 but it just does them very, very consistently and very, very, you know, a lot of circles in there. And gap is basically determining how much or how much of a gap do you want in your circle. 
and there are different functions here. The main thing is that first one is where you're actually going to do it yourself. And I recommend doing it yourself. It's very simple. You have the brush, you look at it and you look, well, okay, this looks all right. You go in here and you see 10 and we had 10. And as we're increasing the gap, the number, you can see it's going to have a little bit more variety to it because Actually, this is what Clip Studio Paint does usually, and it just tries to make it smaller. And if your computer is laggy and your brush just doesn't work as well, I just recommend pushing this just a little bit out of your limit. So for example, 23 looks almost the same as the 10 that we had. 23 is working just a bit faster compared to the 10 that we had. So if you want to optimize your brushes, this is where you would do it. And texture is probably one of the most hardest and most important things to choose and, you know, tweak in your brush. A lot of brushes, you know, make it or break it. A lot of them have different textures. And if you go into texture, you go into none. And there are all these different packs that Clip Studio Paint provides for you. And all the way down, I'll just pick this one. I don't really, <laughs> and uh, I don't really know which one is which. So as you can see, you can click here and, you, you know, start painting. The, there's nothing in there. It doesn't show up. And that is why there's so much tweaking in each texture brush because that is very, very dependent on your brush and the texture. It's really hard to say which one is going to make things better or worse. And the first thing I want you to see is inverted texture. Most of these are light, but if it's like too light, you want to invert it. So it's going to be like really, really dark like this instead of really, really light like this. So it's going to invert from blacks to white and the whites to black. Texture density is going to be how dense is the texture in your brush. And you can see that if I go all the way to 95, it starts adding things inside our brush. But let's keep our texture to 85. Scale ratio is how big is the texture going to be showing up. And if I go smaller, you can see our texture is becoming smaller and adds like more grainy look to it compared to if I had it really, really big and it's going to be big very very chunky you can see these chunks in here like right here you can see this giant chunk and i like to texture my brushes with a very small scale ratio rotation is what it says it will rotate your texture if you have like a very straight on left to right you want to do it maybe 45 degrees brightness and contrast are going to be a little bit lower, a little bit higher. You can change the image that you have picked. And you can see that I have added a little bit more brightness to it. And contrast is basically going to make your image more contrasty. So if you had a texture that had a low contrast, you want to just crank this up all the way. And this way, you can see that it starts adding way more transparency to our brush. So there's a lot of playing and testing with texture brushes. And the next parts are pretty much the same thing, except it's a dual brush. And dual brush, it's a whole another beast. You get into like these super crazy uh, two brushes coming together, like both complicated. And you can see that we can go into airbrush and you apply it. And if we play around with the size, instead of felt tip pen, now we have this brush that is more airy and has like more airbrushy feel to it because it starts mixing these two brushes that we had. And correction, which is the last tab over here that we're going to look at, it's really important and it's really amazing. You can have stabilization, and this is really cool because you can have like a really wonky line and it's going to start stabilizing it for you. You can go all the way to the 34 or you can just add a little bit, you know, five or one. Uh, another cool thing is that post correction and post correction is basically going to look at your thing and try to correct it. As you can see, it's not really perfect because I want a circle and it's going to start using this. 
if you click Bezier curve, which is you know my most amazing French ever, it's probably not even French, but you can do that function, click here, and it's going to make everything very, very sharp. Boom, boom, boom. If you want straight lines, this is the place you would click on. I think it's really cool if you just want straight uh, lines in here. And if you want a really cute, nice uh, ink taper, over here you're going to see taper. And taper is at three. If you go all the way down, you can see that it gets really, really tapery, like super nice. And without it, if we go all the way here and we draw, it's kind of, you know, it's it's still thin, but it's not as thin as this when it goes into, it literally goes into like pixel by pixel. You can feel the difference over here compared to over here. So I wanted to get a very, very cool brush. Where would I go to get them? Well, if you go into Clip Studio Assets and I can just go in here and I will say pencil. I love pencil brushes. I just love them so much. And you can find all of these different pencil brushes and these are the new ones. And you can go into popular, click popular, and you can see that this is the most popular brush by Clip Studio Paint Official. This is, they made it just for us guys. Um, <laughs> and this is, it looks really cool. I have actually used it uh, quite a few times before. This is a really cool brush and you can save it or like it for later and you can do into download. And once you click download, you're going to see that in your profile, in your Clip Studio Paint Manager, there are going to be downloads. You can click here into the data transfer and you can see that this content was just finished downloading. This is the brush that I have downloaded. And if we go all the way here, you can see in downloads, in our folder for downloads, this is our brush. This is the one that we bought. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't buy it, sorry. I, I, I downloaded it, but you can see here that we have it you can just drag, drop, boom. This is the brush that we have. We can use it for anything we want. And you can just you know, select any color you want and boom, this is the brush that we have now for completely for free for us to use and we can do whatever with it. And th there's like thousands of millions of brushes. Here's the thing that I would recommend getting. You can get one texture brush, so like a pencil one blend brush, which we did not mention actually, I'll just show it very quickly. Uh, the third one is a render brush. So something that has uh, color mixing. So if you go into the, you know, round brush, this is for rendering. This is going to be our render brush and probably something we can do for inking. This is going to be our ink airbrush, which is already included in Clip Studio Paint. These five are the main things that you wanna use. And luckily I have been using Clip Studio Paint for a while. I have made my own texture brush, blend brush, render brush, ink and airbrush that I prefer for my personal use. And I will link them down in the description of this video. You can download it for free on Gumroad. It's completely for you. You can do whatever you want with it. You know, you can just even, you can even rename it, say it's yours. I don't really care. I personally love using those brushes and hopefully they'll be useful for you. All I ask is if you wanna subscribe or like this video, share it with people that are looking how to learn uh, brushes in Clip Studio Paint. If you want to tip me on Gumroad, go for it. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna say no to that. And before I go, I will obviously go into blending brushes that I haven't mentioned. Very quickly, click here, click here, you have different colors. If you go into blur, into this little icon, you can see there are all these different brushes that are specifically made for blending. And if you select some of them, they're going to create color in between already. Thank you for watching again. I really appreciate your time. This was really hard uh, video to make. Um, this is probably the 
third time I'm recording this. Like, I, I don't mind if it has very little views. As long as it helps at least, you know, five people, I'm already happy. I don't really need anything more than that. So again, uh, happy painting, you know, enjoy uh, your month, even though if it's hard, if it's rough, you know, just keep your chin up and uh, keep painting, man. Just keep painting. Uh, yeah, this was really, this was a lot. <laughs>